Hi everybody, I'm Jamie and thank you so much for joining me today on this episode of Save the Kales. Today we are actually going to cook with kale. We're going to make a super delicious and nutritious vegan version of a very unhealthy and typically unvegan food. We're going to make a kale mac and cheese casserole with a sun-dried tomato crumble topping. And after that we're going to use some fresh herbs and greens from our friends at a local community garden to make a bean salad. And join me now as we go over to the garden to get some of our ingredients for these dishes. We're here on the campus of Northampton Community College with their Good Growers Club, which is a club that, as you can see, made a beautiful garden using all organic practices. Today we're going to talk to some of the members of the club about how we can take some of the tips they teach us back to our own homes and yards. We're here with Mike McDonald who is the president of the Good Growers Club here at Northampton Community College. So hi Mike. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Thanks um, for why don't you tell us a little bit about how this got started. All right, well, the Good Growers uh, came out of a group from the NCC leadership class two years ago uh, who wanted to investigate starting a community garden here at the college. Um, so we uh, joined forces and we uh, formed the Good Growers Club. What would you say is kind of the mission statement of the garden? I mean, you had mentioned that you do organic practices here. Is that something that's of high importance to you? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, the, the purpose of the garden is to promote sustainability and mostly in the forms of growing your own food, but of course that has a pretty far reach. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the original construction here was with reclaimed materials from the woods over here. Oh, um, wow. And, and other stuff that people have brought from homes or uh, like for instance, some of our raised beds are made mm -hmm. of window boxes from uh, one of the local glass distributors. Wow. That they just leave out to be taken by the garbage men. So we haven't had to rely on any funds from the college wow. at this point. It's all been grants or donations from mm -hmm. other organizations. And can you tell us a little bit about the people who are actually working here, that have plots here and that are doing the work? Are they students? Are they just people from the general public? Okay, um, well some of my club members, the Good Growers members, have um, personal plots, but we also as a club tend a good number of community plots. Mm -hmm. And then um, we have a few community gardeners that have come in from the outside community that have um, made their own plots. And then we also have a few plots that are used by uh, individual credit classes like uh, honors, honors Irish literature, okay, culinary, and um, English classes. You guys Thank have you. an incredible project. It's really beautiful. I can't wait to walk around and see what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you for having us. I see beautiful vegetables growing all over the place. So I just found Caitlin here, who is the assistant to the garden teacher here at Northampton. And uh, Caitlin, you're gonna tell us what you have growing, what you have going on. There's so much beautiful stuff here. So where do we start? <laughs> well, this is our, this was a cold frame originally, and we put, uh, it's a raised bed, obviously. We used broccoli and kale and some cauliflower and cabbage over here okay. are brassicas mm -hmm. and we actually transplanted them last week. So you have a lot of stuff in a very small space and is that kind of the whole point of square foot gardening? Uh, I, I'd like to think so. I, <laughs> I mean here we have a lot of stuff that looks packed and uh, I think it I think it worked out great. We have a root growing grow in the middle and Ooh, and this yeah. is really taken over mm -hmm. and our lettuces and our leafy greens over here wow. and finally our you know our radishes that we can harvest today, actually. There you go. Holy cow, it's huge. Yeah. It's so beautiful. <laughs> it's a pretty one. Wow, it is. Look at the purple color. Mm. All right, so you just took us to another part of the garden where you transferred things that were growing there to here. Yes. We have our broccoli and ah. cabbage over here. Wow. Each plot. They're all in sections. We have a little bit of something different in each one. Yeah. Onions, and they're, these ones are taking off. We got yellow wow. and uh, red onions over here. 
If you want to find out more about what the Good Growers are doing, check out their Facebook page by searching for Good Growers on Facebook. And Caitlin, thank you so much for having us. You guys are just doing really inspiring, really incredible work here. And I think you've also shown people that you don't need a huge plot of land, right? right. And if you do want one, you can come and use this one. It's community garden after all. <laughs> right. Come get a plot. Yeah. So we're going to take some of your uh, ingredients home with us to cook with in our kitchen. But thanks for having us today. Yeah, no problem. Thanks fun. for coming. You're welcome. <laughs> Visit us where Lehigh Valley Mirror began, online at lvmirror.com. Check out our archive of fun and exciting videos about area restaurants, shops, events, local happenings, and more. See what's coming up on our calendar page and read our fun weekly comic strip. Also, see exclusive content that's not in the show at lvmirror.com. It reflects us. Would you like to advertise with us on Save the Kales? Reach a television audience of more than 105,000 households and a huge online following. Maximize your ad potential for a much lower rate than you think. Call 610-435-1864 or email postsputnik at postsputnik.com to learn more about this great advertising opportunity. Thank you so much to all of our friends at the Community Garden for supplying us with some of these ingredients and inspiring us to start our own gardens. We learned a lot of helpful tips. And we're getting ready now to start our kale mac and cheese casserole. So the first thing we have to do, of course, is cook the macaroni. So in this case, I'm using bow tie pasta. I just picked it because it's cute, but you can use whatever kind you want. And this is a whole wheat pasta. Uh, you'll find that most pastas, especially the box kind you buy in the store, are actually vegan. They don't contain eggs. Most don't, but just check the ingredients to make sure. And now we have our kale. And we're going to use as, use as much as you have. So if you get a great big bunch, use that. And to take the stems out of the kale, just hold it at one end and pull it like this and you get rid of that tough stem and you have your curly leaves left over. So we're going to do that and once we get a bunch of it we're going to just give it a rough chop with a knife and try and make those pieces a little smaller and a little more bite-sized. So we're going to cut up and uh, chop up our whole bunch of kale and then just add that to the pasta water uh, when there's only five minutes left to cook in the pasta and that way we can cook two things at once and it'll be less uh, dishes for us to watch at the end of the day. All right so our pasta and our kale is cooked and ready to go. We're going to dump that into a giant bowl we have a lot of stuff to mix, so we don't want it flying out over the sides. All right, there we go. So as you can see, this is going to make a lot of food. Um, and now we're going to make the best part of the whole dish, which is the sauce. And this sauce is so delicious, and it's going to make a lot. We're going to actually make a little more than we need today. So we're going to start with uh, silken tofu. And silken tofu, this is actually a little bit different than the kind of tofu that we used in our first episode. This is in a shelf-stable container, and uh, you can actually see that it's kind of like whipped in texture a little bit more than the other tofu is. So we're going to use one container of that. And you could cut this recipe by half, but like I said, we're going to make a lot because it's delicious, so why not? <laughs> so we have one container of silken tofu, and then we have some raw cashews. Raw cashews are used in uh, vegan and plant-based cooking and even raw foods cooking a lot of the times to make cheesy and creamy dishes. All right, now, this is one of the magical stars of the show. This is miso paste. Um, if you've ever had miso soup, then you've had miso paste. Miso paste kind of looks like peanut butter, um, and it's made from soybeans, and we're going to use a white or a yellow miso paste. We're going to use four tablespoons. And this has a really strong flavor. All right, and then 
Surprise, surprise, nutritional yeast. I told you in the last episode that we use this all the time. So nutritional yeast, this has a lot of B12. It's been fortified with B12, so we get that in our diet. And we're gonna use one cup of this. This also has that yummy, cheesy flavor. This sauce is gonna be really, really hearty and really good, but it has no oil added to it. There's nothing, really nothing bad in it at all. And even the fat that's from the raw cashews is a healthy fat. Okay, smoked paprika. Let me tell you guys right now, if there is one ingredient, one spice I should say, that I think that you should have in your cupboards, it is smoked paprika. Not regular paprika, get the smoked kind. Holy cow, it's delicious. And it makes everything taste so, so good and so unique. So one flavor that when you eat a lot of vegan food you don't necessarily get is that kind of smoky barbecue flavor. So this is a way to get that. So we're using two tablespoons. Smoked paprika, it's so good. It's a little pricier than some more typical spices, um, but it's worth it. So this container was about $5 and it lasts a long time. Okay, and I am using an unsweetened almond milk and I'm choosing almond milk just because I have soy from the tofu and soy from the miso. So I just wanted to cut down on all of the soy, but you can use whatever kind of non-dairy milk you like. Almond milk I think is actually a little creamier than soy milk. So I chose it for that reason as well. Make sure you are not getting vanilla. <laughs> Make sure you are not getting chocolate. I think that's everything for our sauce. So let's get this all blended up. All right, that looks pretty good. Wait till you see this, it's so delicious. All right, we're gonna pour some of this on our giant bowl of pasta. Oh yeah, what did I tell you guys? That is good stuff. All right, we'll stop there and mix it through. We wanna make sure everything is really coated. It shouldn't look like soup, but it should definitely be really, really creamy, uh, really, really cheesy, and really saturated with that sauce. All right, that looks like just the right amount of sauce. And if you want, you can just <laughs> grab a fork and take this over to the couch and eat it right now if you want to, that's up to you. But we're gonna make it a little fancier by turning it into a casserole. So let me get my casserole dish and use the biggest one you have. I might actually have to make two because this one might not even be big enough, but uh, we're just gonna put that into an oven safe casserole dish. There we go. I'm gonna add a little bit more sauce on top just so the top stays nice and creamy even after it's been in the oven. And there's still a lot of this left. You probably have uh, at least a cup or more of sauce left after this recipe. So like I said, just put that in a Tupperware and you can dip vegetables in it. You can make another dish of this if you want to. You will not have trouble finding anything to, to use it for. Okay, now we have our oven preheating at 350 degrees and we're gonna make the topping and get this in the oven. All right, now to make our crumble. Now, usually when you think of crumbles on top of a casserole, especially a macaroni and cheese casserole, it's basically a uh, butter and breadcrumbs. So you're getting a ton of calories and fat and oil, and we wanna try and omit that as much as possible, but this is still gonna pack a lot of flavor. So I have here one uh, roll or one small loaf of bread. Um, it can be old, it can be kind of hard and crusty, but even if it's not, that's okay. So uh, let's see, figure about two cups Worth. So that'll be about half of this, about two cups of bread. We're gonna crumble this all up with our fingers and then take uh, about a quarter cup of sun-dried tomatoes. Try and look for sun-dried tomatoes that aren't packed in oil. If they are, that's okay, but less oil the better. And we're gonna throw all of that into a food processor. And when it comes out, it's gonna look like this. And we do not need to add butter or oil or anything um, because it's so dry, it will still brown up and it will still get crispy and it will still give us the texture that we want without adding all of that extra stuff. So we're just gonna put that topping all over our casserole.
There we go. Okay. So this is ready to go in the oven. Our oven is at 350 degrees. We're gonna put this in for about 15 or 20 minutes just till it starts to get a little bit brown on top. Be careful you don't let it in there too long because it'll actually dry out. We want it to stay really creamy. So 15 or 20 minutes just till the crumbs start to brown. All right, so while that is baking in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes, I'm gonna clean up a little bit and then get started on our next dish, which is gonna be a bean salad with greens and fresh herbs. So stay tuned. This month on Lehigh Valley Mirror, we sample the foods and flavors of the region. We're visiting farms, farmers markets, and sampling local wine and farm to table dining. Tune into the show on RCN4, Digital 1004 in the Lehigh Valley, and RCN8, Digital 608 in the Delaware Valley. Lehigh Valley Mirror. See it, live it. Don't just sit there. Downtown Allentown will be hopping on June 22nd and 23rd at the third annual Allentown Freakout Fringe Festival. There's sideshow, burlesque, film, dance, vaudeville, fire performers, music by the Juice Box, Trouble City All Stars, and more. Enter our Miss Freakout pageant or hula hoop contest. All events are free. Free! Visit AllentownFreakout.com for details. All right, we have our kale mac and cheese cooking in the oven. And while that's in there and the oven is hot, we're gonna get some tomatoes ready for this dish. We're just gonna roast some uh, small cherry tomatoes. I think these are grape tomatoes, little teeny tiny tomatoes. Um, so we're just gonna cut them in half. And the dish we're gonna be working on right now is a salad that has a lot of fresh herbs and some fresh greens. We're gonna dress it with a simple uh, olive oil and lemon dressing with a couple of spices. And it's really surprising how flavorful foods can be when they're left to be themselves. You know, I think we sometimes forget about that when we're used to eating a lot of processed stuff. So I'm just cutting these tomatoes in half. And we're gonna put them into a baking dish. A baking sheet would work fine. And once we have them all in there, We'll just dress them with a little bit of olive oil drizzled on the top and a little bit of salt and pepper. And we're going to throw these into the oven, which is already at 350 degrees. There we go. And we're going to leave them in there for about 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, so while our tomatoes are roasting in the oven, we're gonna get the rest of our dish assembled, and by the time those are done and cooled off, we can put everything together. So the base of this dish is going to be uh, cannellini beans, and these are just small white beans. Now you can use canned. If you were gonna use canned beans, I would say get maybe three or four cans, but if you make them from scratch, from dried beans, let me show you something. Ooh, look at that. It's like a little magic trick. This is how many beans you get from that many dried beans. That's amazing. So don't tell me that vegan food is expensive. No, it's not. Uh, a whole bag of beans costs, I think, $1.15. And one can of beans can cost you about 90 cents. So you can do the math, all right? You get a lot of food. After that little lesson, <laughs> we'll put our beans in the bowl and get them in there. And now we're gonna use some fresh greens. Um, and the greens we're using again are those seasonal uh, early spring Pennsylvania greens that are available right now in gardens like the garden that we visited today. So we have some dandelion greens and these are some super huge dandelion greens, but uh, dandelion greens are quite literally the greens that surround the yellow flowers, the dandelion flowers that you find in your yard all over the place. And they are edible. You can tear them up or you can cut them up. And if you don't like dandelion greens, we also have some arugula. And arugula, uh, again, is a nice uh, peppery flavor. So why don't we use both? So we have some baby arugula. And the smaller it is, the more concentrated the flavors actually are. So this is going to be really, really spicy. 
All right, and now what's really going to bring the flavor out in this salad are the fresh herbs. And we're gonna use three kinds of fresh herbs today. We have some Italian parsley, some fresh basil, and some fresh mint. Now, basil, I think out of all of them is my favorite. So I'm gonna use the most of that. So I'm actually gonna use uh, about a fourth of a cup of packed basil. All right, now we're just gonna use a little less of the parsley and the mint, so we're gonna use an eighth of a cup. There we go. That's looking good and green, and it smells really good too. All right, so now we're gonna dress this with some very simple olive oil and fresh lemon juice dressing. So the olive oil, it's always gonna depend on exactly how much food you have. Um, so what you wanna do is give everything a nice light coating. You don't want it to be drenched in there, but we already have a lot of stuff in here. So I don't know, I would say maybe start out with two tablespoons uh, of olive oil and see if you need to add any more. And then we'll just cut our lemons in half, squeeze them over the top. Try to pick the seeds out if you can or squeeze them upright like this so the seeds don't get in your food. And we'll toss everything through. And again, you want everything to just be kind of like a little bit wet, a little glossy. That's looking perfect. And the acidity of the lemon and the oil is gonna get inside all of those leaves and help break them down so they're not so tough and not so bitter. Okay, so that's pretty much all set. And now we're gonna add some spices to this. Um, this is gonna be a simple salt and fresh cracked black pepper. Where's my pepper? Here we go. Okay, well now, once you clean your hands really well after touching that oil, <laughs> you can get the cracked pepper in there. All right. And I'm going to use, this is actually not a typical really spicy dried red pepper flakes. This is called Aleppo pepper. Um, and it's kind of a smoky sweet pepper. There's a little bit of spice to it, um, but this is amazing. This is actually one of my favorite ingredients that I've just discovered in the past year. So if you are able to find it and you can buy it online, it's called Aleppo pepper. And if you don't wanna use that, you could omit it, or you could also just add some typical dried red pepper flakes. But remember that they are spicy. So I'm gonna use, um, I guess we'll use about a tablespoon of this, maybe a tablespoon and a half because it's really, really good. And because I love it so much, <laughs> we're bringing back the nutritional yeast for just a little bit in there. There we go. Give it a little bit of a cheesy flavor. Okay, and our roasted tomatoes have cooled down, so we'll add those too. And you can see that's already looking really pretty and really colorful. So let's toss everything through. Be gentle <laughs> or else you'll smush the beans and smush the tomatoes. We just wanna mix everything, not completely squish it. Although you could do that, I suppose. I suppose you could put this in a food processor and make a dip if you wanted to. All right. All right, so the salad is done and ready to go. So I'm gonna put it on the serving dish, which is gonna make it a nice little contrast and uh, play around with dishes. You can find a lot of really neat dishes at thrift stores or flea markets, and it really makes your food pop. So you can see those beans look really pretty against the contrast of this blue, which is a little different than when they were in the white bowl. And I have some friends coming by to try this food with me from the Bethlehem Food Co-op Project. And I'm really excited for them to tell you all about it. So stay tuned. Would you like to advertise with us on Save the Kales? Reach a television audience of more than 105,000 households and a huge online following. Maximize your ad potential for a much lower rate than you think. Call 610-435-1864 or email postsputnik at postsputnik.com to learn more about this great advertising opportunity. Visit us where Lehigh Valley Mirror began, online at lvmirror.com. Check out our archive of fun and exciting videos about area restaurants, shops, events, local happenings, and more. 
See what's coming up on our calendar page and read our fun weekly comic strip. Also, see exclusive content that's not in the show at lvmirror.com. It reflects us. All right, guys, we're back and our food is ready and we are ready to eat. But first, I want to introduce you to my friends from the Bethlehem Food Co-op. This is Kathy and this is Colleen, and they're here to tell us about the Bethlehem Food Co-op project, what it is and why it's important. So, okay, Kathy, the, currently in the Lehigh Valley, we don't have a food co-op and a lot of people don't know what it is. So right. what is it? <laughs> That's a really good question. I mean, without having a uh, near... Uh, memory of a co-op in the valley, uh, a lot of people are wondering what that means. And a co-op is basically a grocery store. Mm -hmm. The thing that makes it different is that it's cooperatively owned, which means that you own it and I own it and Colleen and, and anyone who wants to become a member owns that store. And that means you also have a say in what kind of foods get stocked, um, you know, great. what kind of policies we have, and it's, it's really your store, it's the community store. That's great. So now we are not currently open, right? The Bethlehem right. Food Co-op, there's a lot of work being done, but it's not a physical store yet. But uh, Colleen, could you tell us where we are in the process and where we hope to be? Yeah, uh, well, we'll start with where we hope to be. Okay. <laughs> we hope that in 2014, there will be a co-op in Bethlehem. Uh, right now, we're writing a business plan. We're researching what stores are in the area, what, what things are for sale. Um, and we're working on a lot of community outreach. Um, part of what makes a co-op special is the educational and community outreach component. Uh, we hope to have classes for children, gardening, composting, nutrition. Um, so we're getting an early start on that. So another thing that you guys are working on too is a cookbook project. And you know that at Save the Kales, we like cookbooks and we like <laughs> cooking. So why don't you tell us about that? Yeah. Um, that's a really exciting fundraising project we're working on. Now a lot of uh, organizations do fundraiser cookbooks, which are great. Um, we want this to be a really special cookbook that people are going to want to buy, even if you've never even heard of the Bethlehem Food Co-op. It's going to have great local recipes, um, seasonal recipes, feature uh, foods from local farms, and a variety of recipes uh, for both omnivores, vegetarians, and vegans. So it that's should be great. really exciting. That's awesome. Well, this is a really exciting project, and it's going to still take some time to come to fruition, but you guys are doing an incredible job. There are so many people involved in this project doing a really, really incredible job and an incredible amount of work. So, of course, one of the best outcomes of a food co-op, besides helping the community, besides helping local farmers, is buying food and cooking it and eating it. So we're going to do that right now with the dishes that I made today. So what we have here, guys, is a vegan kale mac and cheese casserole with a sun-dried tomato crumble yeah. and then this is a uh, white bean salad with we have all kinds of fresh herbs in there mint basil parsley we have some dandelion greens we have some arugula um, it's gonna be delicious so if you'll join me we're gonna try yeah, this right now sounds I can't wait. <laughs> it looks all right. amazing all right guys what do you think should we dig in great I think so. thanks Jamie. all right yeah, absolutely I hope you enjoy it we'll give this a try it's hard to talk when your mouth is so full of really good food. <laughs> so I guess we'll wrap up the show for today. But guys, thank you so much for coming. You are doing an incredible amount of work for the community of Bethlehem, for the Holy High Valley. The education part is amazing. Um, this is going to be a really fun project. So thank you for being on the show. You can keep, you uh, keep in touch with the food co-op by going to bethlehemfood.coop. And remember to check back next time for the next episode of Save the Kales. Thanks for joining us today, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.